Arr! I know that is the reaction many of you have when you have to think about perspective in your art. I get that. I'm Sandy Alnock, and I am a perspective nerd, and I'm just going to be upfront about that. I think in terms of perspective, and I understand it at a level that I know a lot of people don't, and that's okay. You don't have to all the time. Sometimes might be a little bit of a help, but for the most part, you don't want to. I get it. When I was in school, I was the nerd who loved to diagram sentences. I diagrammed the entire Pledge of Allegiance. Try it sometime. And if you don't know what diagramming sentences is, you are a whippersnapper. <laughs> I have also a friend who can think in math. He can go to a restaurant with a big group of people and immediately just do the calculations and subdivide that bill so everybody's paying the right amount. And we love having somebody like that around, don't we? You don't have to think about math then. Well, you have me to think about perspective for you. So you don't have to worry about it as much. And at the end of this video, I'm going to give you a little something that I think is going to help you as well. So let's get started talking about the craziness of particular perspective. question from Marie, a student, is what inspired me to create this new set of printables and their packages in different perspectives. And the reason why is because she had found this picture of somebody else's drawing of some boxes. She was trying to use it as a reference. And there was just something that wasn't working. And she wanted to know what is going on. And I launched it. I made like the longest, craziest post at Art Venture about it, and I'm sure everybody's eyes glazed over, but I thought, you know, it's worth at least talking about here on YouTube, so we're gonna talk about it. I took that front box, and I just put the lines on it that the person who drew it made them to be, and you can see there's three parallel lines going off one direction, three parallel lines going off the other direction. I don't know why one is red. I don't remember why I did that, but anyway, they wouldn't in real life, if they were in actual perspective, they would not all be parallel. They sometimes will look parallel because you're only seeing the beginning part of that line. But if you were to draw them in actual perspective, those lines would start to narrow as they get further away from you. That's what gives you the sense of distance. That's why these look funky, because there's just a little something off, just a little bit. But the other problem is the boxes are all facing different directions. They're not like a street, a row of houses, a row of buildings that all line up together because they're all kitty wampus. Each one has its own perspective to it. And I know that that's insane and your brain will melt down when you think about that. So I looked for resources online and I found this website and it's actually for package designers. If you have your your image of what you want on the box. You can input it into this little system, I think. I didn't read deeply, but you can look at it on the box and then turn it around and see what the box is going to look like. And it's great for designers, but it's also great for us if you're trying to figure out what a box is going to look like. You can move it around, up and down. If you look at it completely horizontally, the sides look one way. And a long side on a box is going to narrow more at the end than a short side on a box. And there's just all those little things that once you get a hang of perspective, you sort of get a better idea about. You can assess really quickly whether you're looking down on something because you can see the top of the box. Or are you looking up at it because you see the bottom of it? And you can get hold of that once you start grasping perspective. And it's not necessary for every artist to be deeply ensconced in perspective. But this site does allow you to change up different objects and put them in here. You can go to the website and play with it. I'll put a link down below. Uh, I believe it's free because they just let me play around with it for a few minutes. So you can try it out and see. Here we're looking up at the object instead of down at it. And you tilt it the other way. You're looking down at it even just slightly because you're seeing the top. Those are the kinds of things that if you start wondering about perspective, go to that website and just start to see, does that mimic what you see in your reference or in reality around you? Now, if I'm trying to figure out the perspective on, say, a particular photo, like this one that I found online, 
then I would take each individual one of these boxes when they're all kitty wampus this way and figure out what that box looks like if no other boxes were on top of it. What do the sides tell me? And I'm just drawing lines that are parallel to the sides of the box itself. And it just shows you that the, the perspective can get bonkers. But you can also break down an image like this by looking individually at each box's perspective. Now this one is leaning on top of another box, so it's not even square to the horizon at all. It's just kind of, yeah, I picked this one especially because it was ugly and it was a good chance to show people this is the way I think. I look at each box and I try to figure out where is the left and the right side. Even if it's hidden, what would that side look like? Because it tells me how to make that corner of a box and start to turn things into something that looks like perspective. But on top of it, like all of the lines together, they look like that. It is very confusing, very mush making for your brain. Is mush making even a word? I don't know. I hereby copyright it if it's not. All right. Now, this has led me to creating this set of pretty packages. And they're a downloadable set that you can purchase on my website for 15 bucks. And it comes with the three images. The one in the back is just centered with no perspective whatsoever. Just very simple packages. The second one on the left has perspective in which the boxes are all stacked evenly. Like my mom used to line up the newspapers with the edge of the coffee table and everything was squared off. That's what that package stack would be. There's some people that do that. And then there's people that just kind of pile things up any old which way. And that is the image on the right. With crazy perspective, you do not have to draw any of that. The images are included and there's a 12 page PDF that'll talk a little bit about perspective, but a lot about shading. So I think shading is more important if you've already got the perspective handled. And in this, since you've got the images, perspective is handled. And that brings me to doing a small demonstration here so I can explain to you what's going on in my brain when I'm drawing something like this. I did not have a photo reference here. I just decided to draw a stack of boxes. This time I challenged myself to make it so that the bottom ones would be almost in that flat perspective. You can't see the top or the bottom, but as you slowly move up, since it's a small stack of boxes, not tall-ish, but it's not skyscraper height, then very little by little, the undersides of some of those boxes are gonna show as you see the undersides moving at the top. And perspective can change throughout a, a succession of objects. So just know that because you nailed the one at the bottom, all the rest don't just automatically follow that. They all follow the general principles. And on something like this, I had to imagine in my mind where the horizon line is, and it's gonna be low on this because we're looking up at something, so the horizon line will be low. If you're looking down on something, the horizon line is higher. But I had a low horizon line, which meant all the sides are going to taper downward. And I kind of had just ballparked in my brain where that would be. And that comes from years of doing this. So there are some people, if you really want to do this, you're going to have to go through a lot of practicing with drawing all of those lines. In my Drawing 101 Jumpstart class, I go through all of that. And, you know, it's a, it's a killer. It kind of hurts your brain to think that way because we're not used to thinking that way, but we can see it. We can see it in reality around us. If you look at a rectangular object in the room that you are in and you look closely, you will be able to see at on certain sides that one, one side is going to be angled more than another. And the top of that side is going to be angled differently than the bottom of it. It might be really faint because when you're really up close to it, you don't normally recognize that. It's not something that jumps out at you, but your brain still processes it. That's why when Marie saw that sketch, she knew something was funky about it, but she didn't know what. And if you don't know what's wrong, you can't fix what's wrong. And what's wrong was she went to look for a reference and found a sketch instead of finding maybe a reference for what she wanted to draw. And I use references all the time. 
I'm always looking for something so that I can get closer to reality. I adapt from it, or I might combine a whole bunch of references to make something work. But if you're using someone else's drawing, just remember any mistakes they make get multiplied because you're going to make more. We're all going to make mistakes. We're all going to stray. And it's most helpful to simply go to the source and go find an original photograph for it. Now, if you're doing something you're getting paid for, then you can't just use any old thing and just replicate it and call it done unless you have rights to do that. So be careful about those kind of things. But looking for a reference for what a stack of boxes looks like, perfectly legit because it's not something we normally see a whole lot of and would need to have some idea of what it looks like in order for us to be able to render it. Now for the painting of this, I started with a mix of dark blues in the background and I'll clean some of that up as we go, but I wanted to have a really loose feel to this. I wanted to make that tower of boxes feel like just one unit instead of you know, painting every single box a whole different color. And when you're painting something that's outside, it's nighttime, you're not going to see a lot of color. And I did allow the little birdie on top and the rabbit to have some color as well as the sign. The sign would have color because it has lights on it. And when you have anything that has lights, it's going to show more color. And then I'm assuming the moon is just going to make the rabbit lit a little bit more. He really should be much darker than he is, but he will get darker as we go. I got out a brand new to me. I'm so excited about this. I finally have a dip pen I like, which I have not had for years. I've had dip pens and I've used a lot of glass pens. I just don't find them really, they don't fit nicely in my hand. But this one is called a Tachikawa and it is most excellent. I got it because Kelly Joe was uh, part of the gift guide that I produced recently and she uses a dip pen exclusively. And I've always thought that would be really nice because I have a lot of colored inks, but I never want to just clean out a pen so I can put a new colored ink in it. And I just, you know, I don't want to use one color long enough to keep anything but black in my pens. So I have all these inks and I can't use them. Well, now I can use them because I have this pen and I got some of these, what are they called? Um, G nibs, I think they're called. They're, they're for comic artists and you can get different line weights based on pressure. But you can get a super fine, 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 tiny line from this, like way tinier than any of my fountain pens. So I'm kind of enjoying it. You may have seen some of my work with it recently because it's just a heck of a lot of fun and it's super cheap. So that's good. She also recommended another one that I'm saving up for because it's a little more expensive, but it, it looks fancier too. So uh, this one already has some stains on the rubber and I got to get some cleaner and see if I can clean it off. But Anyway, using that and platinum carbon black ink because I had figured I might go back in and do some more painting. I didn't put any detail into the packages, so I wanted to use a waterproof ink so that when I went to add more watercolor to it that I didn't end up lifting all the ink. And I went in using um, the first color that went down is Moon Glow, if you didn't recognize that one. The second is the uh, my favorite pairing for moon glow which is yellow ochre when you use the two of them together you can get a variety of browns and it also made it feel like kind of a purple and gold kind of theme for christmas i like kind of an un unnormal abnormal um, abnormal yes that's the word theme for colors not always red and green and i thought purple and gold would be nice for this and uh just kind of working my way through putting all the shadows on our side of the boxes and, you know, just making it so that the moon is providing the most of the light, a little bit of the, the lights on the sign are providing light, but most of it is from the moon. And uh, in this as well, I wanted to have some dramatic lighting because there's dramatic lighting in the cards that you'll make using that PDF lesson. So it's kind of like a little class in a PDF with three card scenes in it. And I'll talk through how those shadows work and how simple that kind of a scene can be. We do the Christmas tree in one of them, but you can also do it without the Christmas tree in it. And we do both left and right lighting on a set of packages. I hope this was helpful to you. And if for some reason 
you run into a brick wall on some perspective challenge that you have, you've got a drawing you're starting and something just feels a little wonky, just send me an email or a message on social media or pop over to Art Venture because I am more than happy to try to address it the way I did for the person who posted that little sketch at the beginning of this video. I love that. I live for trying to figure out how, what is wrong with something and explain how you can make it right with just a few simple moves. So be sure to reach out if you have any issues because I love solving that stuff. I'm a perspective nerd. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. I would love to see you back here for my next video on Saturday and hit the like button on your way out too. It really helps the channel to be seen by more people who can get some help in their art. I'll see you next time.